Hello to all you vacation rental pioneers out there. My name's Matt Landau, and this is Unlocked, the podcast series that introduces you to the world's leading vacation rental innovators by diving deep into one single key, one specific best practice or technique that opened the door and changed the game. Christy Couts is formerly Christy Elaine. She's the owner of the Starship Landing Retreat in Joshua Tree, California, which is a vacation rental business I've started to reference frequently as a model for branding. Christy happened to be in New Orleans visiting her parents for Mother's Day, so I invited her over to my recording studio, aka my kitchen table, to get this idea down on the books for you guys. Christy's unlocked tactic is fresh and powerful. I have not really seen it done before, but it's such a natural fit for our industry. It's something I think all vacation rental professionals are in a position to capitalize on. As you listen in, begin to think about how this might work for you, how you may be able to apply the same tactics to your situation. So without any further ado, here's me and Christy. My name is Matt Landau, and this is Unlocked. Welcome Thank you. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Where are we? We're in New Orleans. You just flew in. Wait, when did you fly in? I flew in on Monday night, actually. Okay. Um, And so I've been here for a little bit and just picked up my husband at the airport last night. Midnight. Midnight, yeah. And you stayed somewhere downtown, did you? We did. We stayed right around the corner and... We're heading to the jambalaya capital of the world tomorrow. And that's where mom lives? Yep. Which is called? Gonzales, Louisiana, where we're having a big crawfish boil that somebody's attending. I am so excited. Those (laughs) who are not physically here with us, I'm I'm kind of dancing right now. Let's start off with a little introduction because no one actually knows who you are at the moment. So start off with your name and the name of your company, madame. Awesome. My name is Christy Kautz, and my company is Starship Landing. It's uh, two properties on 10 acres, two houses sitting next to each other in Yucca Valley, which is in the Joshua Tree, California area in the high desert. And we launched about six months ago and are loving it so far. And I'm just going to suggest people go straight to your website right now and look at how beautiful everything is presented because you have nailed the branding thing. And we really should eventually do a whole discussion about your branding, which is fantastic. Um, But today we're going to talk about something slightly different. And before we even get into that, I would like to start by asking you what you did professionally before you entered this crazy world of vacation rentals. Out of college, what did you go and start doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I started working in the music industry right out of college. I went to LSU and then moved out to Los Angeles and started from the bottom working at a creative artist agency, which is one of the biggest music agencies and talent agencies in the world. And And what were you actually doing there? So I was working in music marketing and digital and also did comedy marketing as well. And then worked my way up working with musicians at management companies. And then I worked with YouTubers. So just creators in all capacities. And um, then I went into advertising with music publications. And then finally at Playboy working in um, advertising, ad sales marketing. So always advertising and entertainment spheres. Yeah, branding, marketing. And is that where you met your um, lovely husband? Oh, that's a long story for probably another time. Separate podcast? Yeah, I met him on a blind date maybe like 11 years ago now. We didn't really talk to each other for about nine years. We stayed friends on Facebook. We just had a one night stand. And then then we reconnected on Tinder. Didn't end up hanging out. Then we reconnected on Bumble and now we're married. Third time's a charm. <laughs> yeah. So. What an incredible series of events. Yeah. So dating apps. And what does Matt do for those um, who don't know him? Oh, Matt works at Warner Brothers Studios. He does uh, data and analytics for all the movies and TV and anything they need him for. He does. He runs a big team of data people. <laughs> so he's also kind of in the digital entertainment world as well. Absolutely. You guys talk about that kind of stuff all the time? We do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you both kind of did this whole thing until you started thinking vacation rentals. Yes. And Starship Landing was the first property or that represents both properties? Sorry. We bought them both at the same time. And we were initially just looking for one house in the desert. And when we found this compound, we were like, our brains exploded. And we were like, how are we going to finance this? And obviously vacation rentals, like was top of mind. So we 
started thinking maybe we can do this while we're working. And I suddenly realized when I started the design process and, and planning and starting the branding that a, it required way more work than I thought. And uh, note to those who are thinking about entering the business, right? Yeah, it's, it was a full-time job and, and uh, I loved every minute of it. And so I realized I was enjoying it so much that I just kind of wanted to leave the nine to five and devote every waking minute <laughs> to these properties until they were launched and make sure they were awesome, like the best they could be. And it, it seems like things are going well. So far, how long have you been open now? A year? About, I guess, October. So you know, six months, seven, eight, I don't know. And are you generating bookings? Are people coming to stay? Oh, yes. How does it feel? <laughs> it feels amazing. I do kind of miss staying at the houses myself, <laughs> but um, they're fully booked all the time. So this is a good problem to have. It is a great problem to have. And when you're not able to stay at the houses, where do you stay? Oh, I have a friend that lives about five minutes away. I stay at her house and then. But you guys live, don't live in. Oh, yeah. We live in Santa Monica, California, right by the beach. So pivoting into this unlocked tactic has to do partially with the person who manages the home. And tell me a little bit about this individual. Okay, so we work with someone named Brad Klotman at the co-host company, and he came on board just when we were getting ready to launch the first house. And we met him actually a, a while before, but he reached out to us and asked if, if he could manage us or talk to us about it. And we put together a deal. And ever since he's been kind of like someone I couldn't live without, he really, he really makes a huge difference in the success of the properties. And so I'm guessing the majority of the work that Brad and his team do are sort of technical management kinds of things, arranging cleaning and fixing stuff, maintenance, stuff like that. Right. And then I'm guessing there's a whole separate side, which is creative and interesting marketing avenues. Right, definitely. So he's helped us with the launch of the website. He's helped us get set up on Instagram. Even though I have a background in that, he really understands the vacation rental industry and and how that works best. So um, he's helped us with PR, any anything you can think of. He knows about it and he's knowledgeable and like tells us what to do and it's always on point. Brad is like awesome. He's the man. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. Um, and there's one specific element of some of stuff that Brad does that I find particularly interesting. And it has to do with influencers, which is a very new world to me. It's something that you were kind of familiar with back in your former professional life. But describe to us the way that the influencer stuff started with regards to Starship Landing. I'd like to take a quick moment to share a little vignette that I keep coming back to. And it's the vacation rental movement like a parade that's coming through town. As independent owners and managers, we can either jump in and join the action, or we can watch it pass by. And as you can hear from this conversation, joining in on the parade means innovating, adopting new technology, and doing things that haven't been done before. This podcast would not be possible without the support of Point Central, a company that epitomizes innovation. Their property automation services like smart locks, and smart thermostats allow us to focus on the highest value jobs in the process, delivering a more seamless experience to the people that we work with. Head over to pointcentral.com slash VRMB to learn more. That's pointcentral.com slash VRMB. Thanks to the Point Central team for their leading role in our proud vacation rental parade. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, yeah, so I have a background um, working, putting together influencer programs for big brands, and so. And describe just what that means briefly for those who don't know. So it's basically hiring an influencer to put together, uh, whether it's digital content for a brand or whether it's a social promotion or just social posts, or it's a sponsorship where they show up at the event and do something crazy. Or and these influencers could be in any niche. In any niche, and we would just find influencers that were very unique to the brand. And that means just how they have a lot of followers on their social media accounts. Is that the best de definition? A lot of followers, but they also need to be engaged and they need to be on point with the style of the brand and you know the tone and everything. Okay. They need to be the right fit, basically. Okay, so I interrupted you. You were saying you had done that previously with these um, entertainment worlds. Definitely. So I knew I wanted to have influencers at the properties, but Brad took it to the next level. He already had um, influencers that he was working with to do 
photographs. And I think we had some influencers before the property even launched. We had some come out. They were just friends of friends and did some promotions. But we didn't have the right shot list prepared for them. And it didn't really kind of work out the way that we expected, which was a huge learning experience for us. And what was the big learning point there? It's basically the type of influencer that you need to hire or not hire, but work with is one that has a lot of other content that's lifestyle, aspirational travel, one that's not about the way that they look, but about the places that they're going and the type of life they're living and their engaged, their audience needs to be engaged with what they're doing and kind of like look up to them for advice. Interesting. And, and maybe this first experiment wasn't the case. Yeah, they had about almost 400,000. This one woman had almost 400,000 followers on Instagram, but all the comments were all about, you know, you look beautiful. I want to marry you, <laughs> things like that. And so it didn't really work out. It, you know, it was also our very first time and they were just friends. But what we learned is that we really have to be super specific. So Brad has an influencer that he works with and he'll give a shot list to them of all the stuff that it, all the shots that are expected to be captured while they're there. And we did that once with our very first shoot and we got some really great content. And from there, we started getting requests. Once we started posting that on our Instagram, we started getting requests from influencers out of the blue, just asking if they can come stay at our property and promising that they would get us content. So you're not actually, no money is trading hands. No money. You're offering up free nights in the, the property. Well, I pay for the cleaning. Okay, you pay for the cleaning. So they're not paying anything to come and stay. Correct. For how many nights? Usually two, and we try to do it on a weekday, like a Monday or Tuesday. When you would otherwise be empty. Right, exactly. So this is great for people who have either empty middle of the week or maybe even a low season. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So you'll offer up these free nights. You will then, what, put forth some sort of specific proposal or agreement? Correct, yeah. It's, it's an informal email usually, but it just has everything that we would like for them to capture and the ways we'd like them to capture it. We also leave a lot of interpretation. So we're, we welcome them to take any sort of photos they'd like. We just ask that they try to get the shots on the list. And they don't always get everything, but we sometimes get more than we ask for. What do the shots on the list mean? What does that mean? Um, so that's like maybe shots playing pool at the pool table or shots in the kitchen making a meal or lounging in the hammocks. Or we'd really like you to capture that we got a new EV charger for cars. So could you pull your car up and take a photo using Neat. it? So you, you predetermine things you'd like them to take photos of. Exactly. And then the outcome is that they are taking photos and that you now have, you own these photos or they own the photos or? We both own the photos. So they can use the photos however they'd like and so can we. So this is one, a great way to generate wonderful new visual perspectives of a property that have been interpreted by someone who knows how to do visual interpretations. Right. And then do you also get, um, like, do they publish the photos on their account? Is that part of the deal? Yeah. So they'll, we kind of mentioned that they should publish one or two. We don't say that they have to publish it while they're there. It can be in like the next month or so, because we know that they have a lot of content that they need to promote for themselves as well. So we kind of keep that loose, but they usually end up posting more than we asked. And a lot of times they'll post months and months later as like a throwback Thursday. Wish I was back at Starship Landing. Doing oh, TBT. Yeah, yeah, I know that. TBT. Hasht hasht hashtag TBT. Yeah. And how many of these have you done now? Oh, probably about six or seven, maybe more. Groups of influencers. Can well, it's from usually one just, just one or two. It'll be someone in their significant other who's also a photographer or one or two of them were big groups. Like we had a wedding company come in and do a whole styled wedding shoot where they got a DJ. Were under they actually having a wedding? No, no. They just all dressed up as such. And they got a DJ to go underneath our metal arch structure in the back and they did smoke bombs and they... Whoa, talk about committed influencer. Oh yeah. They had a, they, they ran our disco ball lighting in the, in the living room and did smoke bombs inside and did a disco party. And we have all these photos that we didn't even ask for. We had no idea. Oh my gosh. So how do you actually find these people? Uh, well, that one in particular reached out to us, but Brad will reach out sometimes just if he sees someone that he thinks would be a good fit, he'll reach out or he also has all of the other properties he's working with. So if anybody reaches out to those properties, he'll keep them in his roster of people and be like, well, maybe this house isn't available, but I have this other house. And sometimes the influencers will actually ask, do you have other houses I could stay at? Hmm. 
Interesting. And would you be open to sharing like the template or the basic agreement that you present to these individuals with listeners? Sure. So long as there's no sensitive information in there? Yeah, I can definitely do that. I'd probably like to ask Brad if I can like duplicate his email, but okay. And if not, we give people a gist of an idea of totally. Yeah, I think that would be great. So I'm going to try to summarize what I just learned. And please feel free to correct or add or take away anything that I missed. You come from a world of digital slash entertainment stuff. And you know this newfound role of almost a new kind of advertising, which is influencers. These individuals who have huge followings of loyal people who kind of do what they say or like to buy things that they buy. There's two kinds of influencers. There's those who focus on themselves and their bodies and their appearance. And then there's others who focus on this broader lifestyle, things that go around the the human. And you tend to look at those individuals as wonderful lenses through which you can have new perspectives to both generate new photos for your database for all kinds of marketing use and to kind of piggyback off of their existing followers, followings. And you do all of this without spending any money, really. It's kind of a way to take advantage of an otherwise wasted resource, empty nights. Of course, you are spending a little bit for the cleaning and whatnot. But in the big scheme of things, especially only six months into this business, it seems like a very effective, impactful initiative activity that you can be investing in. Yes, correct. I would like to add something to that. Please. So the reason that these influencers are so excited to come and stay at the properties and they're asking to is because we spent a lot of money, time, and energy creating very Instagram-worthy spaces around the property that make the influencers look good to their audience. Mm -hmm. So from murals by local artists to giant metal sculptures to all of these really cool design themes around the house that they're kind of like, my audience would really think I'm cool if I'm in this place so and I'm works, sharing it. So works for both sides. If you had like a sort of a grandma's basement, they may not be so keen on it. Correct. Yeah. They have to look really good to their audience. So you kind of have to think in the design when you, from the very beginning, what are people going to want to post on Instagram and how can I appeal to these influencers and get them to want to come to my property and show off that they're there and tell everybody where exactly where they're at. So you have to really think that through if you want to attract the influencers. Is this influencer thing a part of advertising of the future? I think so, yes. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. I don't think it's going anywhere, no. It's growing exponentially. And it plays wonderfully into the hands of independent vacation rental owners. Absolutely. Who can make a decision on the fly, use up an empty few nights in the middle of the week, and generate a wonderful advertising asset. Absolutely. Christy, thank you. Of course, thank you. And to close, just a quick reminder of who made this episode possible. It's Point Central, the property automation experts of our industry. Head over to pointcentral.com slash VRMB to learn more. And when you use that page, you'll become eligible for free HVAC analytics, which tells managers when the HVAC starts to misbehave before our guests get upset. This also makes property owners happy by taking care of the problem before it becomes too expensive. And if you're feeling cheerful, please also consider writing us a quick review in your podcast app. We read every single one of them, and we pass them along to our esteemed guests. This industry is growing up quickly, my friends. This industry is unlocked. Unlocked.